It is with great pleasure that I call upon Mr. Malcolm X to speak fifth in favor of the motion. that I've ever had an opportunity to be as near to conservatives <laughs> as I am. And the speaker who preceded me, first I want to thank you for the invitation to come here uh, to the Oxford. And the speaker who preceded me, first I want to thank you for the invitation to come here uh, to the Oxford Union. The speaker who preceded me is one of the best excuses that I know to prove our point concerning the necessity sometimes of extremism in defense of liberty, why it is no vice, and why mod moderation in the pursuit of justice is no virtue. I don't say that about him personally, but, <laughs> but that's tight is the... <laughs> He's right. Um, X is not my real name. <laughs> but if you study history, you'll find why no black man in the Western Hemisphere knows his real name. Some of his ancestors kidnapped our ancestors from Africa and took us into the Western Hemisphere and sold us there. And our names were stripped from us, and so today we don't know who we really are. I'm one of those who admit it, and so I just put X up there to keep from wearing his name. <laughs> and as far as uh, this apartheid charge that he attributed to me is concerned, evidently he has uh, been misinformed. I don't believe in any form of apartheid. I don't believe in any form of segregation. I don't believe in any form of racialism. But at the same time, I don't endorse a person as being right just because his skin is white. And oftentimes when you find people like this, I mean that type. <laughs> when a, a man whom they have been taught is below them has the nerve or firmness to question some of their philosophy or some of their conclusions, usually they put that label on us, a label that is only designed to project an image which the public will find distasteful. I'm a Muslim. If, 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 if there is something wrong with that, then I stand, stand condemned. My religion is Islam. I believe in Allah. I believe in Muhammad as the apostle of Allah. I believe in brotherhood of all men. But I don't believe in brotherhood with anybody who's not ready to practice brotherhood with our people. I don't believe in brotherhood. I just take time to make these few things clear because I find that one of the tricks of the West, uh, and I imagine my good friend, or th at least that type is uh, <laughs> from the West, one of the tr uh, tricks of the West is to use or, or create images. They create images of a person who doesn't go along with their views, and they make certain that this image is distasteful, and then anything that that person has to say from there on, from there on in, is rejected. And this is a, a policy that has been practiced pretty well, pretty much by the West. It perhaps would have been practiced by others had they been in power, but during recent centuries, the West has been in power. They've created the images, and they've used these images quite skillfully and quite successfully. That's why today we need a little extremism in order to straighten a very nasty situation out, or a very extremely nasty situation out. <laughs> I think the only way one can really determine whether or not extremism in defense of liberty is justified is not to approach it as an American or a European or an African or an Asian, but as a human being. If we look upon it uh, as different uh, types, immediately we begin to think in terms of 
extremism being good for one and bad for another, or bad for one and good for another. But if we look upon it, if we look upon ourselves as human beings, I, I doubt that anyone will deny that uh, extremism in uh, defense of liberty, the liberty of any human being, is a vice. Ex anytime anyone uh, is enslaved or in any way deprived of his liberty, and that person is a human being, as far as I'm concerned, he is justified to resort to whatever methods necessary to bring about his liberty again. But most people <laughs> usually think in terms of extremism as something that's relative, related to someone whom they know or something that they've heard of. I don't think they look upon extremism as it's, uh, by itself or all alone. They apply it to something. A uh, good example, and, I, and one of the reasons that it can't be uh, too well understood today, many people who have been in positions of power in the past don't realize that the power, uh, centers of power are changing. Uh, when you're in, in a position of power for a long time, you get used to using your yardstick, and you take it for granted that because you forced your yardstick upon others, that everyone is still using the same yardstick, so that your definition of extremism usually applies to everyone. But nowadays, times are changing, and the center of power is changing. People in the past who weren't in a position to have a yardstick or use a yardstick of their own are using their own yardstick now. You use one, and they use another. Uh, in, in the past, when the oppressor had one stick and the oppressed used that same stick, today the oppressed are sort of shaking the shackles and getting yardsticks of their own. So when they say extremism, they don't mean what you do. And when you say extremism, you don't mean what they do. There's entirely two different meanings. And when this is understood, I think it will, you can uh, better understand why those who are using methods of extremism are being driven to them. The, a good example is the Congo. The, when, the, when the people who are in power want to use, again, create an image to, to justify something that's bad, they use the press. And they'll use the press to create uh, a humanitarian image for a devil, or a devil image for a humanitarian, a humanitarian. They'll take a person who's the victim of the crime and make it appear he's the criminal, and they'll take the criminal and make it appear that he's the victim of the crime. And the Congo situation is one of the best examples that I can cite right now to point this out. The Congo situation is a nasty example of how uh, a country, because it is in power, can take its press and make the world accept something that's absolutely criminal. They, they take American trained, they, they take pilots that they say are American trained, and this automatically lends respectability to them. Uh, <laughs> And then they will call them anti-Cuban, uh, anti-Castro-Cubans, and that's supposed to add to their respectability, <laughs> and, and eliminate the fact that they're dropping bombs on, on villages where they have no defense whatsoever against such planes, blowing to bits black women, Congolese women, Congolese children, Congolese babies. This is extremism. But it is never referred to as, as extremism because it is endorsed by the West, it's financed by America, it's made uh, respectable by America, and that kind of e extremism is never labeled as extremism, because it's not extremism in defense of liberty, and if it is extremism in, in defense of liberty, as this text has just pointed out, it's extremism in defense of liberty for the wrong type of people. <laughs> that kind of extremism. That's cold-blooded murder. But, it, but the press is used to make that cold-blooded murder appear uh, as an act of humanitarianism. They take it one step farther and get a man named Shombi, who is a murderer. They, they refer to him as the premier of the, or the prime minister of the Congo to lend respectability to him. He's actually the, the murderer of the rightful Prime Minister of the Congo. They never mention that this man... I'm not for extremism in defense of that kind of liberty or that kind of activity. They take this man who's a murderer. 
Yeah, the world recognizes him as a murderer, but they make him the prime minister. He becomes a, a paid murderer, a paid killer, who is propped up by American dollars. And to show the, the degree to which he is a paid killer, the first thing he does is go to South Africa and hire more killers and bring them into the Congo. They give them the, the, the glorious name of mercenary, which means a hired killer, not someone, not someone that's killing for some kind of patriotism or some kind of ideal, but a man who is a paid killer, a hired killer. And one of the leaders of them is right from this country here. And he's glorified as a soldier of fortune when he's shooting down little black women and black babies and black children. I'm not for that kind of extremism. I'm for the kind of extremism that those who are, who are being destroyed by those bombs and destroyed by those hired killers are able to uh, put forth to thwart it. They will risk their lives at any cost. They will sacrifice their lives at any cost against that kind of, of, of uh, criminal activity. I'm for the kind of extremism that the freedom fighters in the Stanleyville uh, regime are able to display against these hired killers who, have, who are actually using some of my tax dollars that I have to pay up in the United States to finance that operation over there. We're not for that kind of extremism. And again, I think you must point out that the real criminal there is the, or rather one of the, uh, one of the, uh, one of those who are very much involved as accessories to the crime is the press. Not so much your press, but the American press, which has uh, tricked your press into repeating what they have invented. <laughs> but I was reading in one of the English papers this morning, I think it's a paper called The Express. <laughs> Uh, it gave a, a, a very clear account uh, <laughs> of the type of criminal activity that has been uh, carried on by the mercenaries uh, that are being paid by United States tax dollars. And I, it, it showed where they were killing Congolese, whether they were from the central government or the Stanleyville government. It didn't make any difference to them. They just killed them. <laughs> and uh, they had, had it fixed where those who had been processed had to wear a white bandage around their head. And any Congolese that they saw without that white bandage, they killed them. And this is clearly pointed out in, in the end of last week, there would have been a, an outcry and no one would have allowed the Belgians and the United States and the others who are in cahoots with each other to carry on the criminal activity that it did in the Congo and, and which I doubt anybody in the world, not even here at Oxford, will accept. Not even my friend. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, I wonder what, exactly what sort of extremism you would consider the um, killing of uh, missionaries to be. Yeah. 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 the type of extremism that was involved when America dropped the bomb on Hiroshima and killed 80,000 people, or over 80,000 people, both men, women, children, everything. It was an act of war. I'd call it the same kind of uh, uh, extremism that happened when uh, England dropped bombs on German cities and Germans dropped bombs on, bombs on English cities. It was an act of war. And the Congo situation is war. And when you call it war, then you, anybody that dies, they die a, jet, a death that is justified. But those who are, but those who are, those who are in the Stanleyville re regime, sir, are defending their country. Those who are, those who are coming in are invading their country. And some of the refugees that were uh, questioned on television in this city a couple of days ago pointed out that had they not, had the paratroopers not come in, they doubted that they would have been molested. They weren't being molested until the paratroopers came in. <laughs> Any, any act of uh, murder, nor, and do I glorify